Okay, so uh, dear students, today we'll, we will be discussing a topic. So we will be discussing about Poisson recreation. So a lot of modeling uh, you can use for the categorical data analysis. And one of the most uh, popular uh, regression model for the categorical data analysis is Poisson regression. So uh, you need to know about the Poisson regression a little bit. So what is Poisson regression? Poisson regression is used to model count variable, right? So if your data is count in nature, right? If your data is count in nature, that means the response variable, suppose you are considering your response variable and the type of the response variable is count, right? Like the count nature, then you can use the Poisson regression. So this is the basic uh, prerequisite or basic assumption of Poisson regression. There are a lot of assumptions you need to follow. Like you have to test your data, right? You have to check the distribution of your data. But the basic assumption or the basic basic prerequisite is that if your response variable is count in nature, then you can use this Poisson uh, regression model. So mostly in the categorical data, uh, this uh, regression model is uh, popularly used. Like this is a very common technique you can apply for your modeling purpose. Okay, so let's take a look some of the examples where you can use the Poisson regression model. Suppose the number of people in line in front of you at the grocery store. Suppose you go to Shopno, the, one of the uh, popular grocery store, right, in Rangpur. Suppose you went to Shopno, then the manager of the shop know like at the end of a day or at the end of a week, the manager is interested to know how many people, right? How many customers were in his or her shop in a particular week or month. So what he or she can do, he or she can count the total number of customers, right? How many customers they served, right? For purchasing a particular product. So that, what is the response variable then? The response variable is count because they made a decision, right? Based on the counting, based on the counting. So the manager or the administrator or shop no grocery store, right? Might be interested to see many predictors that might influence, right? The selling pattern or maybe the profit or loss characteristics of a particular commodity or product or even uh, at like the for the whole grocery store, right? So this kind of example or this kind of modeling is very popular. It's very common, in fact, for the categorical data analysis. So the predictor might be in different types of the variable. It might be categorical variable. Uh, it might be qualitative, quantitative, no problem. But you should look at your response variable. If the response variable is count in nature, right? So you can use Poisson regression model, right? So uh, what is the example I just said? Suppose you are interested to investigate the number of people in line in front of you at the grocery store, okay? Yeah? So the predictors you can consider like the number of items, right? like the number of items currently offered at a special discount price and whether a special event, for example, holiday or big sporting event is there for fewer days away, right? So a lot of predictors you can use for your analysis. So what is the second example? The number of awards earned by students at one high school, right? Suppose how many awards you had when you started in the high school, or maybe right now you are studying at the university level. So we can change the example like the number of awards earned by you at Begum Rukha University, Rangpur. So if you want to estimate the number of awards, right? So you have, you have to count also. So the response variable here is count response variable. So 
if you can consider some of the predictors, what are the predictors might be? The predictors of the number of awards and include the type of program in which the student was enrolled. Suppose one predictor is type of the program. What's, what kind of program you enrolled? It is vocational or general or academic, right? And the score on their final exam in math. So the number of award you are gonna get depends on two things or depends on two predictors, right? Number one is the number uh, type of the program. In which kind of program you enroll? Is it vocational, general or academic, right? And the score you earned in your final exam, suppose in the math course, right? So the number of awards might be affected by these two predictors, right? Could you please tell me anybody, what is the type of the uh, predictors are here? Just, I want to know type of the program. What is the type of this variable? Tell me quickly. Categorical. This is categorical predictor, good. And the score, in the final exam in math? This is continuous. This is continuous, good, okay, it's fine. So there are a lot of confusions. There are a lot of confusions when you are gonna analyze your data. Like a lot of modelings are very similar and you might get confused which particular model you are gonna use right for for the effective data analysis that means you have to choose the correct model or you have to choose the correct method for a effective or good analysis of your data right so there are many methods uh, those are very close and very confusing right so some of the methods i'm mentioning here you need to know what are those methods number one is the poisson regression so we already learned about the poisson regression so Poisson regression is often used for modeling count data, right? So it's a very simple idea. If you have count data, uh, you can use the Poisson regression modeling, right? Count data means the response variable must be count. And Poisson regression has a number of extension useful for count models, right? So there's a problem here. Sometimes the count of the response variable, suppose, uh, what should I say? Like, uh, I can say some example for you. Suppose the number of times you visited uh, Dhaka city in your whole life, right? And why did you go to Dhaka? So I want to investigate. So how many times you go to, you went to Dhaka, this might be the count, right? Count response variable. So there are some other statistical measure you can use. Suppose I want to calculate the mean. Mean, mean, like total mean, uh, departure from Rongpur to Dhaka. How many times you go there? So I can calculate the mean. I can calculate the variance, right? So And I also calculate the whether the mean is greater than variance. So there are some statistical terminology or prerequisite or assumption. Sometimes the mean is greater than variance, right? So this is called a problem like the over dispersion, over dispersion problem. Anyway, so there are a lot of assumptions. That's why if you want to be accurate, for the data analysis, right? You have to play with the data. You have to check the assumption of your data. That is very important. That also you have to pre-process your data for the final outcome modeling, like the, if you want to have a perfect modeling or perfect outcome, right? So anyway, so what are the, those methods like the categorical data modeling methods? You might get confused. Uh, uh, those methods are the first one is Poisson regression, as I told you already. And the second was the negative binomial regression modeling, right? So what is a negative binomial regression model? So negative binomial regression can be used for over dispersed count data. As I just told you, what is over dispersed count data? Okay, that is what is over dispersed count data when the conditional variant exceed the conditional mean. So yeah, this is the exact uh, like the interpretation. It's not the interpretation like the exact prerequisite. What is the over dispersed count data? This is a problem in in uh, in the data. This is called the over dispersion. So what is over dispersed count data when the conditional variance exceed the conditional mean, right? That means when the variance 
will be greater than the mean. Normally, mean should be greater than variance, right? What do you think? I told you normally, mean should be greater than variance. What do you think? What is your opinion? Variance can be greater. What is the normal, like, what is the normal thing? Some no idea. Mean should be greater. Of course, the mean should be greater. Like, you CGPA, right? Yes, sir. You CGPA is very close, you see. Like, the uh, 57 students, if I can take your result, all the students get on average, like, more than three. Then if I take the variance of the standard deviation of your result, I will find just a very few, like, maybe one or 1 1.2 something, right? Or maybe below one also. So normally the mean should be greater than the variance, but sometimes uh, in, the, in the categorical data analysis, right? Or even uh, for the longitudinal or prospective or retrospective study, you might face this problem in your data sets. So this is called our dispersion data. So don't be worried, you have many modeling. That's why a lot of modeling is coming because our problem is gonna change, right? And the pattern of the problem is gonna change every day like the as the day goes on the problem the nature of the problem is gonna change so a lot of programming a lot of modelings you have so you just need to know the usefulness of those modeling so one of the useful uh, criteria of the negative binomial distribution is that when you have over dispersed count data that means when the conditional variance exceed the conditional mean then you can use negative binomial regression modeling. It can be considered as a generalization of the Poisson regression since it has the same mean structure at Poisson regression and it has an extra parameter to model the over dispersion. If the conditional distribution of the outcome variable is over dispersed, the confidence interval for coefficient in negative binomial regression are likely to be wider as compared to those from a Poisson regression. So this is also a very common problem in our analysis. Sometimes we get the confidence interval very wider. Wider means a very large confidence interval, right? So sometimes we got the very narrow. So these are the some of the problems as far as your confidence interval estimation, right? So why the confidence interval is getting wider because the problem in your data set, right? So you need to check. So that's the problem. You have to select the appropriate model for the modeling of your data. Otherwise, the result might get misleading information, right? The confidence interval might get wider, right? Or the parameter estimation might be inaccurate, right? So it's a lot of, lot of things you have to take a look about the assumption of your data, assumption of your modeling, the nature of the data, right? Uh, then you have to check the data also. So a lot of things. So here the main difference between the Poisson regression and negative binomial regression is that for both regression modeling, I repeat, for both regression modeling, you can use the count data. But the problem is that sometimes we might face the problem of over dispersion. If the problem exists in count data, like the problem is over dispersion, so you cannot use the Poisson regression. Still, you can use the Poisson regression, but the problem is in the result, you might face several problems. So what do you have to do? You can use the negative binomial regression model. So this is the basic difference between Poisson and negative binomial distribution or negative binomial regression, I, I, I have to say. So another is called a zero or zero inflated Sometimes the people can say this is a Poisson regression model. So zero inflated regression model. What is zero inflated? Zero inflated models attempt to account for excess zeros, excess zeros, right? In other words, two kinds of zeros are thought to exist in the data, true zeros and the excess zeros. Zero inflated models estimate two equations simultaneously, one for the count model and one for the excess zeros, right? So could you please give me one example where you might face like a lot of zeros in your data? Could you please give me one example? Hey, response me, please. Sorry. Sorry. 
Hello. Sir, that could almost... Just try to understand. I told you, suppose you are going to investigate one problem, right? For the response variable, suppose a lot of zeros. Consider the weather, weather pattern. Suppose you want to investigate the rainy, rainy day. What is the what is the pattern of the days nowadays? Like it's so hot, right? No rainy day. Suppose last one week, Saturday no rain, Sunday no rain, Monday no rain, right? And maybe in Tuesday there is a little bit rainy rain, and the follow up then the remaining days no rainy. So what is what is the type of this data? Lot of zeros, right? Lot of zeros. You understand what I mean? And suppose you yes, go sir. for a, mainly in the longitudinal survey or the longitudinal study or the prospective study, you might get this kind of data. Suppose what I did in my research, like I used to go to the household every month, right? So we have a four years data. So we, every month we, we, we used to collect mosquitoes, the dengue mosquitoes, the edis, right? So mostly then, mostly we didn't find any mosquitoes. Right, because it depends on the season. Some season, the dengue mosquitoes or the Aries mosquitoes are available, right? So I got a lot of zeros, like January, no mosquito zero, February, no mosquito zero, right? So in real life problem, mostly in the epidemiological study or the health related research, uh, mostly or not mostly, I'd rather say, sometimes you might get zeros. Now, like the COVID-19 nowadays, if you consider in 2022, right, in Bangladesh, so we, we feel proud, incredibly proud sometimes because our government, right, uh, they demand, they, they, they had a good policy and they control COVID-19 comparing the other countries, very good, right? So yeah, maybe if you can consider this data set starting that in the January from in the year 2022, right? So maybe you can get a lot of zeros, right? like in January, no COVID or, or some COVID like, or maybe weekly, daily. So these are some of the examples where might you might get a lot of zeros in your response variable, right? So where, when you need your response variable, a lot of zeros, then you can use the zero in fluid regression model. So this is the same model like the Poisson, but even the negative binomial is also is very close to Poisson. Just the difference is in the negative binomial distribution, if you have over dispersed count data, you have to use negative binomial distribution or maybe the negative binomial regression model. But what I, what's about the zero inflated regression model? In your response variable, you should have some zeros, right? So a lot, lot of questions might come, how many zeros? So mostly like the, if your data suffers from the zeros, right? a lot of zeros in your data set, maybe then you can use the zero inflated regression model. Anyway, and what is the OLS regression? OLS regression, the like count outcome variables are sometimes log transform and analyze using the OLS regression. Many issues arise with this approach, including loss of data due to undefined large values generated by taking the log of the zero, which is undefined and biased estimates. Anyway, so now the this is a very common estimation methods, ordinary least square, right? So just uh, if your data follows the normal distribution, right? And just the, for the normal data, maybe we can use the OLS regression, but Due to the problem, real life problem, our data suffers with a lot of problems, right? And the pattern of the data is very difficult to analyze. So yeah, ordinarily, least square is a very common problem. It's a common estimation method, but uh, comparing the OLS, the other methods I have just mentioned, starting from uh, the Poisson negative binomial and the zero inflated might be used more than the OLS regulation because the response variable might be varies, right? There's a lot of problems with the response variable. So anyway, so this is the some of the basics uh, about what about the Poisson regression model, right? Uh, for analyzing categorical data. So uh, uh, additionally, I talked about some of the other models also, but the objective is same. All the variables like deal with the count data. But based on the count data and the nature of the count data, we can use several uh, methods, right? So now we go for a practical example. And we now we are, we are gonna try with R programming, right? So let's see a practical example, okay? So I want to uh, use a data and 
uh, in the previous class, we tried to run the data, how you can run your data, right? So I told you uh, that you can run your data in several ways, in different ways, right? So one of the way, like, suppose your data is already in your hand, like you don't need to code your data. So data is available, just I, I want to run the data. So this is the command for running your data, right? So I just run this data. And let's see what happens. Okay. So you go to, I want to search my data. Where is that? Okay. Maybe here. Mm. Okay. So this is the data. Uh, I just run the data and let's take a look of the data. What is that? And you, you can see the view also in the view function, right? So this is the data. So how many variables are here? I just mentioned in the second example. And this data is related with the second example. I just mentioned a few, few times, few minutes back in my slide. So tell me how many variables are here? Four variables. Hmm? Four variables. It's not the four variables. ID is not really a variable. It's just a serial number. So I don't need any, I don't find any logical reason to use the ID. Better you can say there are three variables are here. Number one is the number of awards. What number of award or awards you got, suppose at Begum Rook University Rangpur. So you see a lot of zeros or sometimes one. Anyway, I just want to use the Poisson regression modeling. You can check with the other modelings. You can also use the inflated regression model and try to see what the differences you are gonna get from the, as far as the output is concerned. So, and the next variable is that program. What kind of program, right? What kind of program you want to admit or you admit it? So I also talked about the categories of the program, like the vocational, academic, or the another thing. And finally, the how what was your score in the math scores, right? Math course. So we had three variables now here. And what is the response variable here? Number Limit. of hours. Yeah, number of hours. So this is the count data. And what are the predictors? The program. So program is truly a categorical variable, right? And math scores is just the continuous variables. Now try to model it out using the Poisson, Poisson regression model, right? So we can read the data, we read the data already, and we can see the summary measure. We want to see the some of the basic statistics, right? The basic statistics, like we can calculate the mean, minimum value, right? Uh, first quartile, median, mean, third quartile, and the maximum value. So uh, you see, uh, you, you find the all the descriptive statistics you found for three variables. That means number of award, program, and math. Do you think this is accurate? Do you think the analysis is accurate? Or do you think there is a problem? Sir, I think accurate, but uh, for program, I think the calculation is not accurate because this is categorical data and exactly. finding not. The problem yeah. here is the categorical representation. You see, you are telling me there are like a lot of categories, right? You told me like the in the in the third variable or maybe the second one, I forgot. Okay, uh, this variable, right? Program. So for the number of awards, the calculation is accurate, no problem. For the math score is also accurate, no problem. But for the program, program is truly a categorical variable here, right? So sub and if I want to calculate minimum, maximum, what was the result? We check it again. The, for the program, minimum is one. First quartile two, mean two, third quartile two, maximum. Even third quartile is, you see, 2.25. So this is not really accurate, right? And there is no, what should I say? Like there is no meaning. You can calculate, the computer can calculate by his own way, but uh, you have to input the correct data, right? And you did not tell the computer that this is a categorical variable. You did not tell. You just, uh, what should I say? You just 
input the data, right? So maybe you have to change a little bit uh, in the programming. So in the next step, you can see here, like what I did here, I just try to factor, or I just group the program variable into several factors, one to three. And I also mentioned about the levels. What are the levels? One is general, three is academic, uh, two is academic and three is vocational. So uh, the data has been converted into factor, right? So the program has been converted into factor. So now uh, do this, uh, we can run this code, right? And, 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 and run the summary again. And you see now that the differences, now this is very okay, right? I think now this is okay. Or I'm not sure, like they did not calculate the summary statistics or they just put some of the summarized things, right? Now you can, maybe you can use this information. You can calculate your descriptive statistics. Anyway, so you have to categorize the factor, right? And you have to show your computer, okay, this is a categorical variable. So uh, you have to do this. Anyway, last is, then it's our turn to uh, do the modeling. So now we can do the Poisson regression, right? Poisson recreation. How we can do? So uh, this is the, in fact, the command. So GLM. So you have to find a link function. This is a generalized linear model, right? And so the response variable is number of awards. And you are doing the regression. So number of awards on how many predictors you can use? Program plus math. And what is the family of the distribution? The family of the distribution is Poisson. Poisson, right? If it is zero inflated, you have to write here zero inflated. If it is negative binomial, you have to write here negative binomial, right? And the data is equal to P, okay? And you can use a summar summary of your whole analysis, right? So you can just run the code and you will have the result. So uh, this is the result. So, and you can just now interpret uh, what is the program, what is the influence of academic when the program is academic? Uh, what is the interpretation of vocational, right? And math, okay? So these are the programs. So these are the factors. These are the factors. So you can conclude what is the significant factors are here. For what? For the number of award, right? So you can use a p-value approach, right? You can also interpret with the estimates, Poisson regression estimates from here. Also, uh, uh, and the iteration was used like the Fisher scoring iteration. So number of iteration was six and dispersion parameter for the Poisson family taken to be one here, okay? So this is very important. You can take a look in your home. You can, you can search Google what the meaning of this sentence, right? So yeah, this is the thing. And you can also check the overall model fitting of your data, check it. In the last class, I told you, you have to check the validity of your regression model. So you can do it right now. I think you can just search for another coding. So, so for the prediction purpose, for the prediction purpose, we can do a little bit of programming. In the last uh, lecture, we did, but we had, a, we had some problems. So anyway, I did the prediction here also. So you can just run the prediction and you, want, you can take a look uh, the predicted value. The, see, these are the normal object and predicted values. I think you remember when I did for the normal regression modeling. So I don't want to repeat it again. And, and the some, uh, some more coding you need to find. You need to find some uh, other things as also like this. And you can also run this code. The finally, what we are gonna, the important thing is the graph. I told you many times, like, suppose you go, you did, a very simple analysis and the result, but it's better if you can present in the graph. The same thing, the prediction model, the predicted values, right? Or the predicted scenario, we want to model it out using the graphical procedure. So for that, you need to use a uh, package ggplot, right? So this is really a ggplot tool. So you can use a ggplot, you can create a plot for the prediction of this problem for the prediction purpose. So you can use this function, ggplot, and p is nothing but the data, and aes for the axis, right? In the axis, axis what you want to see, you want to see the math score in the y-axis, the, the value you just calculate, and the color, the color will be different from the problem. Why? Because the only categorical variable here is the program, type of the program. So based on the type of the program, right, you want to see the prediction and the math. Math is not 
categorical that's why no need to put the color right uh, even you can put the color here no problem so it's based on your aim and objective and the geometric point is a function right so using some mathematical or statistical measurement the alpha is 0.5 normally you know and position what it build the position is you can change the position 0.2 0.3 no problem and the line of the size you can change the size for the line right the, for the graphs you can change it from two one two three no problem and levels right x a math score was the expected number of award right so now try run this code okay so this is the in fact this is the figure right so this is the a vertical axis this is the horizontal axis math score and this is the prediction right so this is based on the program and it look like a scatter like right? so you can predict or you can interpret the whole output of your research based on this graph right and like what is the changes of the number of award right these are the changes right and the changes are occurred due to the predictors due to the predictors and what are the programs you can admit it like the general if you admit in the general general what is the predicted number of award you might get if you if it is vocational what is the predicted number of awards you might get and the, and the other thing is the academic okay so you can interpret i'm not gonna tell you the true interpretation you might try and try to interpret uh, what is the interpretation of this graph as far as the predictability of the Poisson regression model to solve your problem of interest, right? So yeah, this is the uh, topic for our today's class. And this is very interesting because normally in our real life, a lot of problems you might face, right? And the problems might based on the count data, count, right? So we take a look in our data is really a count data. So uh what we did we just did a modeling using a Poisson regression model but you can change your modeling i told you repeat it again you have to check the over dispersion in your data set you have to check the over dispersion in your data set you have to calculate the mean or the conditional mean or simply the mean of the total number of award you have to calculate uh the variance of the total number of award right in your whole data set if the variance is greater than the mean, then what problem occurs? A problem name over dispersion problem occurred, occurs in your data set. Then what do you have to do? You have to look for another model. You can no longer be, you can no longer use the Poisson regression. You have to go for the negative binomial distribution. Also, you can check your response variable as far as the zero value is concerned. If you find a lot of zeros in your response variable, what you can do? you can check for the zero inflated Poisson regression model, right? So in the follow-up study or the longitudinal study, you might, you might get this kind of variable, right? Suppose that a particular disease, suppose you are gonna go to the village and you are asking, hey, are you suffering from disease? He or she will say no, maximum will be no, right? So a lot of zeros you might get for a epidemiological study, then what do you have to do? You have to change your model from Poisson to zero inflated Poisson regression model. Okay, so this is a way, this is a topic we just talked. If any, if there is any question, you are always welcome. No question? Any question or any query for today's lecture?